In this video, I want to show you how you can add rate limiting to uh, your Superbase backend by using a serverless API gateway. In this case, I'm going to use Zuplo, which is where I work and a company I founded. And we're going to put Zuplo in between your clients and the Superbase backend and very quickly add rate limiting. And then we'll actually, we can take a look at some dynamic rate limiting ideas as well. So uh, first of all, I have a project here in Superbase called uh, To-Do List. I haven't even created a table yet. So let's go and just create a simple table. Um, and obviously if it's a to-do list, it's gonna be called to-dos, I guess. And let's just add a complete column. That's gonna be a bool. And we will default it to false. And we'll add a description, which is gonna be text. There we go, and that should be non-nullable. Um, that should also be non-nullable. Should always have a value, and there we good. I think we got like got enough of a to-do list table there. So let's create that, and we're off to the races. So now, obviously, thanks to the power of Superbase, I have an API that allows me to insert into tables, to select from tables, etc. But what I'm going to do is I need to rate limit, um, perhaps rate limit based on user. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a gateway in front of Superbase. And the gateway I'm gonna use is Zuplo, which is a free um, uh, serverless API gateway. There are paid options as well, of course, but you can you can use this for free. It should support most of your, your projects in that tier. So I'm gonna create a new gateway called to-do gateway. And as, you know, as a gateway, as an API management product, basically Zuplo is a proxy that intercepts API requests and then forwards them onto the back end. But it makes it very, very easy to um, to add things like rate limiting, to add JOT authentication, to do dynamic transformations, to, to combine two databases into one single endpoint using function programming and much more. This is used by like large organizations to manage lots of APIs. But we also find people having a lot of fun with hobby projects. Um, and a, you know some traction in the Superbase audience, and so that's why I'm making this video. So you'll see that my gateway is already live here, um, so it's super quick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a route, and since we're gonna be creating to-dos, this is another thing actually, is with, with Zoopla you can create the sort of, the API you want. Um, so it doesn't have to look like an OData or Postgres API. Um, it can be very designed to look more restish, and that's what this is gonna look like. So we're simply gonna support, um, uh, a get here, so get all to dos, and that will be a get on to dos. We, yeah, sure, let's use versioning. So, we're going to put a v1 on here, which gives us room to think about in the future. And you know, maybe we want to enable cores for these clients, that's cool. And um, just for simplicity in this demo, I'm not going to use jot tokens, I'm going to call the back end. Um, directly using the service role key. But there's another video that shows you how you can use Superbase Jot tokens um, uh, with uh, Zuplo. So for example, you would just add a policy here, search for Superbase, and then you can call us, just click that, enable it. You can specify certain claims are required um, for someone to call this API. And that will just forward on to the, to the Superbase backend. So in this case, we're going to do a get all to do's v1. I'm going to use a function here for this. I'm going to create a new function, a new module. So let's call this um, to do's. And let me just explain what's going to happen here. So this is a file that's going to run a bit of JavaScript on a, on a server. And I just created a route that's called v, slash v1 to do's. So if someone hits that route, it'll match this stuff up here, get slash to do's with a, a v1. It'll come in, it'll run any policies that we have set up, and then it's gonna execute this code. And what I'm gonna do in this code is I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Superbase. So I'm gonna import, uh, I think it's called create client from at Superbase slash Superbase JS. And then I'm gonna say const, um, um, so let's just call it SB equals create client. And this is gonna take a couple of things that I need to get from Superbase. So let's head on over here and let's look for our API docs. And you'll see there's the introduction and actually beautiful, it gives me all the code I need here. So I'm just gonna copy this um, here, 
Now this is uh, Node code, and we're not actually running on Node here. We're running on on web workers like Dino and Cloudflare workers. Um, if you've seen if you've seen those tech, so we just to make, need to make one change, and that's that we won't be getting the super base key from process.env. What we'll do is we'll import environment here, and I'll get it from environment. So I've now created, uh, this is a default function. I don't want that actually. So I'm gonna export async function uh, get to do's. And um, I need to remember to set my super base key. So I'm gonna use the service role for this. This gives Zuplo full power over your backend, but it doesn't give your clients that power. They can only do the things that you expose uh, here. So let me find my keys that's in here, auth. No API, and then I'm going to reveal and copy that. And I'm going to go and create an environment variable here called super base key. It's a secret, so let's make sure no one sees it. Save that. Okay, cool. So now in that code I just had here, the super base key is coming from our secure environment store. So we're pretty much ready to go. Let's just go and take a look at the code to get all of the records. So if I go back to the API documentation, which is down here, I pick the to-dos table and somewhere it'll say select all, read all rows. So I basically want to copy this code, paste that in here. I personally don't like using let, so I'm going to use const because they don't change. We select everything. That's cool. And then I'm going to do an error check. If error, throw new error, error, that should be good. A um, little lazy, I could be a little bit more, you know, deliberate there and send back a response with some details or not some details, but I'm just doing a quick demonstration here. And then other than that, I'm just going to return data. So I'm just going to return the data, let Zuplo do the serialization to JSON for me, and we should be good. So um, uh, why is that up? Oh, happy, cannot find name data. Oh, the data was renamed as to do. So I'm not going to do that actually. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that should be ready. I just need to save my changes. And yeah, it's complaining because it's still mapping to the default export. But if we go in here now, you'll see that it sees the get to do's. If I save that, the build error will clear and we are built and deployed. And so that's actually live. So we can go and we can go and try that. There's a couple of ways we can just come in here. We can hit this test button and you see we got no data back. And that's because there's no data in the table. So let's go and put some data in our table. To do's insert row. I'm going to let the ID order generate. I'm going to say it's completed and the name is by milk. Okay, so if I now go here and refresh on my gateway, with a bit of luck, I'm getting one item back called by milk. So we've now got a gateway sat in between, in between your clients that are calling this API. In this case, it's the browser, and um, and the, the to do the sorry the super base backend. So let's go and add rate limiting. I just want to show you just how crazy easy that is. So I'm going to come in here and say add rate limiting. I'm going to rate limit by IP address, let's say, and I'm going to allow um, two requests in one minute. That's pretty strict, um, but you'll get the idea. And so now I'm going to go back to test this again. So if I hit this twice, once, twice, I should have used all of my time. So this third time I get rate limit exceeded. Please try again later. So that's how easy it was to add rate limiting. So um, let's edit this policy. I'm going to change its name. I'm going to say this rate limit requests because we might want to support posts as well. We might want to support data being pushed into the super base backend with um, with um, a different, you know, with a different rate limit, for example, like maybe I'm stricter about, about posts in my method. So let's create a new route. I'm going to call this create to do. It's going to be a post. It's going to be on the to-dos path also. Let's put this on version one. Let's also enable cores and let's do a function. I'm going to save that. Now I need to create a new function here that's going to actually insert. So I'm just going to copy this code. This is actually a little lazy now. So let's just let's just make this easier. So const sb equals um, So now I can say const superbase 
Ooh. equals SP. So I'm just putting a bit of reuse in there. So easy peasy. So it's just, you know, normal TypeScript, normal JavaScript, pretty easy. This is going to be called create to do. And I'm going to need to get the code here. So let's go over to the API docs again. Click on to do's. And let's see if we can find a create insert a role. Perfect. So we can leave the error check in there. Uh, in a const data error equals from to do's insert. And this data, this data is actually going to come from the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the body of the incoming request. So const payload equals await request dot body. Oh, actually dot JSON, because we're going to read it as JSON and turn it into an object. And then I'm going to put the payload in here. And if I just, just remind myself, it's some column, some value. So it's a little shame this isn't dynamic, right? It doesn't say like completed and um, uh, description, but we can do that ourselves. And actually we're going to do that in the, in the, in the, the body we send to our API. So I think we're pretty close to done. I just need to change this mapping to be uh, not get to do's, but create to do's. So there we go. Create to do. Save that. So now I've got a new method. Now to test this, because I need to send a body, I can't use the browser because it's hard to do a post in the browser like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use our built-in Zuplo test client, which is this tab here. I'm going to add a new ta a new manual test called create to do. And uh, when that's done, I'm going to type in the URL v1 to do's. It's going to be a post, and the body is going to have um, completed as false and description as by socks. So let's see if this works. So we got a 500 internal error. Uh, let's have a look. So, so the API isn't sending back too much detail, but here we'll see we got some, uh, some information. Error executing request handler. Something's going wrong. So let's go in and debug that for a second. That should be fun. So let's see, um, looks like we might be getting an error here. So let's context.log.error. Let's actually deliberately write this out rather than just throw because that's causing a two string on here. This is not a JavaScript error that we're getting here. So let's try that again. I think we'll get some more information this time. Yeah, so here I got, oh, column completed does not exist. Um, Okay, well, that's obviously just a little a little error, um, and it was complete. So I could help my users, actually. I could even do better than this, and I could create a schema validation on the API that would that would make that even easier. But now we're seeing we get a 200 OK, so that's, that's pretty nice. In fact, there's one thing I don't like about this. We're getting a 200 OK. Um, it should be a 201 for an insert, really. So let's go and fix that. So I'm going to go into my code here, to do's, and instead of just returning data here, I'm going to return new response. So if everything went well, uh, JSON dot stringify. Actually, I don't need to return any data. It's just inserted, right? So I'm just going to return nothing. We can return null actually, and status is going to be 201. Now, if you wanted to return the ID, actually, so actually let's do that. So let's do um, data.id. And then I got an error. It says it can't read ID. Let's take a look at what, what does data look like. I'm not actually sure what we're getting back. So I'm going to do context.log.info data. Save that. Go back to my test client. Let's create a test. And then we'll see. Oh, it's null. So it's actually sending me back null. It doesn't send me back the ID. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but OK. Um, and so there's no point sending that. We're just going to send a, a null response to the client. Let's delete this. Save that. Hit test. 201 created. So now I feel better. So if I actually go and look in the database table, I expect to have a bunch of these buy socks to do's. So let's go and take a look at the table to do's. And there you go. We got lots of buy socks. So we're actually inserting records. And so now what I want to do is put a different rate limit on that API, on the create API. And um, I'm going to create a new rate limit. And this is going to be called rate limit creates. 
And this is going to be more strict. It's going to also going to be by IP address, but it's going to be only allow one request, one request in one minute. You can set real, more realistic numbers here, of course. And um, I'm going to go to my test client now. And so I'm going to hit test. Boom, I get a 201, it created. And then I'm going to hit again, and then I get 429, too many requests created. So you can see I have different rate limits. Actually, let's just create a manual test for get all to-dos. And v1 slash to-dos. Yep, 200. I get to do that twice. And then on the third one, I get 429. So you can see we have different rate limits for different methods done by IP address. Um, in this case, this is a secure solution um, because I have a public API here, which maybe you want. And I am now calling a, uh, a backend and I'm using the service role key. So that means Zuplo can do anything with Superbase, which is great. Um, I'm going to make another video for you that will show you how you can actually have a JOT token passing through your um, the gateway that passes onto the back end that allows you to use role level security. But you can ensure that clients must call through Zuplo to ensure that the rate limit is enforced. That'll be another video that I'll do for you soon. But if you just want to put rate limiting on, on Superbase, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Thanks.